Hello kids, this is Mr. Whistler with your video lesson of the day, and today we're going to be talking about Total War and the Surrender at Appomattox. Our first vocab word is Total War. Total War is when an army destroys all items of any military or civilian value. So after the army leaves, nobody can use anything to continue to wage war on the army. Creating conditions that will motivate the enemy to quit. It makes it really tough on civilians. General Sherman was able to operate deep within the enemy's territory without supply lines while destroying the South's potential to wage war. All right. Um, African Americans in the war. Let's talk about them first. So in the South, um, Southerners did not want to use slaves to fight because they were worried about the slaves rebelling. They did not want to put guns in these slaves' hands for fear that the slaves would turn on them and shoot them. Towards the end of the war, the South became desperate. They needed soldiers. Lee supported using slaves to try to fight in exchange for their freedom. Um, but this never happened. In the North, at the beginning of the war, African Americans were not permitted as soldiers, but they were allowed in the Navy. Um, by, let's see, escaped slaves were used as guides and spies. Harriet Tubman was one of these. She was a uh, she was used as a spy in the Civil War, and she um, did some pretty amazing things. In 1862, they started to allow African Americans to serve in the Army, and many enlisted. And by the end of the war, 10% of the Army was made up of African Americans, 18% of the Navy, and there were 200,000 in all that served in the American Civil War for the North. Um, African American soldiers, at first they didn't pay them the same, they paid them lower until they found out about it. And then in 1864, they started a protest, and um, this led to them getting equal pay. They did not serve with white soldiers. They had their own separate regiments. And uh, one of the famous one was the Massachusetts 54th. And they were led by white abolitionist officers. When Lincoln was criticized for using black soldiers, he just quoted General Grant, whom everyone loved. Grant said, they will make good soldiers and taking them away from the enemy weakens him in the same proportion they strengthen us. So as soon as Lincoln said that, they, they're like, oh, that makes sense. Many Southerners were outraged. They threatened to execute any black soldiers they captured. Um, some were executed that were captured. Slaves who saw black Union soldiers were overjoyed. By becoming Union soldiers, African Americans took an important step towards securing civil rights. Hey, women in the war. Women took on new responsibilities during the war. While the men were away fighting, they were teachers, office workers, sales clerks, factory workers, government workers, and managed farms. So when the men left, the women had to step up and do the men's job while they were away fighting. Um, they performed many jobs that helped the soldiers. They rolled bandages, they wove blankets, they collected food and clothing and medicine made ammunition and raised money for supplies. So women just didn't sit back and do nothing. They, their lives probably got a lot harder when the men went off the war. Some were spies and many worked as nurses. The main role of women during the Civil War was they served as nurses and helped spread awareness of the necessity of a sanitary environment. 
back in these days when they did surgeries or operations, they didn't really know too much about germs and and they would sew somebody up and it would get infected and they'd have to amputate their limb anyway. So they started to figure out that they needed a clean sanitary environment to do surgery. Some women even fought as soldiers. Um, they weren't allowed, but some cut their hair and dressed up as men, which enabled them to fight. For example, this woman here, this is her as a um, woman on this side. And then her all, I think all her brothers went to war and she felt like she needed to do her part. So she disguised herself and went as a woman. And they did a pretty good job. And the, really the only way that the men found out they were women is if they got wounded and they had to be tended to and they had to take off their shirt and things. Um, women suffered terrible loss. Native Americans helped in the Civil War. Uh, Native Americans hated the United States because of all the grief that the United States government caused them over the years, so they chose to fight with the Confederacy. All right, now remember, Gettysburg was the turning point in the war. Before Gettysburg, the South had been winning most of the battles. They had all the best generals. And uh, Lee decided to go on the offensive to try to get Britain and France to help, so he went back in to the North one more time and it was the turning point in the war because it was the second and last time the Confederacy invaded the North and the Confederacy lost. After Gettysburg, the North started to win the war. Um, General Grant was the commander in the West, for the Western Army, and his job was to take control of the Mississippi River. And, um, Remember, they had several generals in the east, and that was the main army, the Army of the Potomac. Started with um, McClellan, and then Burnside's took over, then um, Hooker took over, and they just couldn't find, uh, Lincoln couldn't find a, a commanding general that he liked for the Army of the Potomac. Well, when Grant took the city of Vicksburg in the west, um, that gave the North complete control of the Mississippi. And since Grad did so well, he decided to try Grant as his commanding general. Hey, I want to make you my commanding general. Okay. Grant's old position the Western in the Western Army would be taken over by General Sherman. His mission was to advance to Atlanta and crush the Confederates in the Deep South. I've made top general, so you have to take over the Army of the West. Okay. I'll take care of Virginia, and you take care of the Deep South. Okay. So total war. After Sherman took Atlanta, he asked Grant if he could try total war. This meant his army would abandon its supply lines and live off the land. Total war meant the Union troops took what food they needed, tore up railroad lines, fields, houses, and killed animals and destroyed anything that the enemy could use. Um, this would destroy all items of military and civilian value. Their plan was to use total war all the way to the sea and then turn north and meet up with Grant in Virginia. This devastated the South. Uh, in some places, they cut a path of destruction 50 miles wide. Sherman said, we're not only fighting hostile enemies, but a hostile people and must make old, young, rich, and poor feel the hard hand of war. General Grant, can I put some total war on the South? Okay. 
Sherman's march to both Atlanta and the sea was significant because it was he was able to operate deep within enemy territory without supply lines while destroying the South's potential to wage war. Surrender at Appomattox. Throughout the fall and winter of 1864, Grant and Sherman continued to wage war on the South. Lee and his troops continued to fight, but sickness, hunger, casualties, desertion to weaken the Confederates, and Lee finally had to surrender to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9, 1865. Here's a picture of the surrender. Ah, surrender. Okay. Appomattox Courthouse was significant because it was the meeting location where General Robert E. Lee surrendered to General Ulysses S. Grant, effectively ending the Civil War. Now here's a quote from Lee. And it starts out, I need not tell the brave survivors of so many hard-fought battles who have remained steadfast to the last, that I have consented to the result from no distrust of them. Now, this little piece of the quote means, I don't need to tell you that it's not your fault we are surrendering. Then he goes on to say, but feeling that valor and devotion could accomplish nothing that could compensate for the loss that may have attended the continuance of the contest. This means further fighting could not accomplish victory and losses would be heavy. And then he goes, he finishes by saying, I determined to avoid the useless sacrifice of those whose past services have endured them to their countrymen. So Lee surrendered to Grant because further fighting could not accomplish victory and losses would be heavy. The historical significance of the Civil War was it showed that the federal government became stronger. So that argument, who's more powerful, the state governments or the federal government, is finally solved after the Civil War. The federal government is the most powerful government. All right, so in our notebooks, on the left side, we're going to have the note taker, and there's going to be two pages, so one of them is going to have to be a flappy. So I'd put page two down flat and make page one your flappy. You're gonna draw a picture that illustrates the concept of total war, however you wanna do that. And then thinking about this, your, your writing is thinking about the strategy of total war used by General Sherman. Do you agree with this strategy or not? Explain your reasoning. So we'll make a map and talk about that and I'll post that as well. And that is it, kids. So I hope you learned something today. And this is Mr. Whistler signing.